On January 2nd, 2024, a Japan Airlines commercial jet struck a small military plane upon landing at Tokyo's Haneda Airport. Both aircraft immediately burst into flames, with the Japan Airlines jet careening down the runway and eventually coming to a halt in an embankment. When you watch the replays of the accident, it's hard to believe that anyone survived. But miraculously, all 379 people aboard the Japan Airlines flight made a harrowing escape. Now, much praise was immediately heaped onto the crew, and rightfully so. Japan Airlines has a very strong safety culture, and the crew was prepared for a swift and effective evacuation. It's really no wonder that everyone managed to survive. But the one thing that didn't survive was the plane. The plane in question, an Airbus A350-900, is now little more than a pile of ash and rubble, even though firefighters made it to the scene quickly. Now, the A350 is unique in that it's one of the only commercial jets on Earth that's built from carbon composites. And at first glance, it sure doesn't look like those composites fared all that well in the face of fire. Considering the damage, it inevitably raises the question. Did the passengers of Japan Airlines Flight 516 survive the crash because of the composite fuselage or in spite of it? In other words... Are composite planes like the A350 and 787 a fire hazard? Let me explain. Now, before hopping into it, I wanted to let you know that I just started a new channel called Kobe Explores. Over the past few years, I have traveled all over the world, visiting air shows, airlines, and even visiting Boeing and Airbus. And Kobe Explorers will bring those experiences to you. As a sneak peek, I'll soon be publishing an exclusive tour of the new 777X cabin, a guided tour of an A350 flight test vehicle, and interviews with Airbus's chief engineers. In addition, I'll also be publishing some flight reviews. I personally think that a lot of reviews today are kind of boring, and I hope to change that. If you want a taste of what one of those reviews might look like, just take a peek at the intro to my recent Lufthansa First Class review. If this kind of behind-the-scenes content sounds interesting, go give Kobe Explorers a subscribe. I'll leave a handy link to the channel right here. Thanks again for the support, and back to the video. First, let's talk about how the A350 is constructed. The plane is built from a number of materials, including aluminum alloys, titanium, and steel. But its most prevalent material is carbon fiber reinforced polymers, or CFRPs. CFRPs are built by taking interwoven carbon fibers and covering them with a plastic-like substance, usually epoxy, that holds the fibers together. CFRPs make up about 53% of the A350's total weight, which actually makes it the most composite-heavy aircraft on Earth. In comparison, the rival 787 is just about 50% composites by weight. Now, the reason that planes like the A350 and 787 rely on this material is pretty straightforward. It makes the planes a whole lot lighter, which improves efficiency and range. But the use of this material does pose some challenges. For one, manufacturing and developing composite parts is more complex and expensive. And just recently, we saw a bitter row emerge between Qatar Airways and Airbus due to issues over how paint sticks to the A350's composite skin. But up to this point, one challenge that neither OEMs nor airlines have had to face is how composite planes would fare during a fire. Now, it is true that the 787 once struggled with battery fires, but those fires were fairly small and were quickly contained. In addition, the batteries were located in compartments that weren't made entirely from composites. This made it difficult to assess just how the material would stand in the face of extreme heat. But in the case of JAL-516, things are totally different. The aircraft has been burnt to a crisp, and I don't know about you, 
but the second I saw the pictures of its charred remains, it immediately reminded me of another crash, Asiana Flight 214. This Boeing 777-200, a plane that's nearly the exact same size and dimensions as the A350, crashed during landing in San Francisco back in 2013. And once that plane came to a stop, a raging inferno also broke out. But if you compare the Asiana 777 to the Japan Airlines A350, the prior seems to have handled the fire much, much better. So does this mean that composite planes are a bigger fire hazard than their aluminum brethren? Well, the short answer is no. In fact, the opposite is true. You see, composite materials can handle much higher temperatures than aluminum. Aluminum starts to melt between 1100 and 1300 degrees Fahrenheit, or around 6 to 700 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, carbon fiber can withstand temperatures up to 3600 degrees Fahrenheit, or 2000 degrees Celsius. Moreover, when CFRPs are exposed to extreme heat, they tend to burn in a rather complex way. Remember, CFRPs are made of layers of carbon fibers that are bonded together by resin, and this creates distinct strata within the material. When the outer layer burns, it tends to char, which can actually form a protective layer that'll slow down the progression of a fire. And this is a property that aluminum just does not possess. Finally, carbon composites don't conduct heat in the same way as metals. They're actually pretty poor conductors of heat, meaning that if a local area of the fuselage is burning, the material itself won't quickly disperse or spread that heat to other parts of the aircraft. Now, these benefits aren't just hypothetical. They've actually been proven in the lab. When the Boeing 787 was undergoing initial development, the FAA carried out extensive fire testing on composite samples. According to the Seattle Times, the agency found that these samples stood up to fire much better than other materials. The same was true when Airbus was certifying the A350, with initial testing showing that the composite structure offers at least a similar level of fire resistance as aluminum. This isn't definitive proof that composites are better at handling a crash, but it does offer some reassuring anecdotal evidence. Okay, but if that's the case, if composites are really so resistant to fire, then how do you explain this A350's charred husk? Well, candidly, we don't totally know. And after a request for comment, an Airbus spokesperson told me that it's too early to draw definitive conclusions. That being said, a different accident may provide some crucial hints into what happened. Back in 2008, a B-2 stealth bomber crashed during takeoff in Guam. Now the B-2, like the A350, is primarily built from composites. And also like the A350, the plane burned steadily for at least six hours. Now a detailed report from the US Air Force showed that a few properties of composites made the firefighting process more difficult. First, unlike metals, composites can smolder and reignite. In addition, since composites are layered, they burn through in a progressive manner. Essentially, the composite layers provided fresh kindling right below the surface of the inferno, which fed the flames. Finally, composite smoke is quite toxic, making it more difficult for firefighters to approach the plane. All in all, it seems that the B-2 and the A350 crashes have taught us that yes, composites can take longer to catch fire and give occupants more time to escape. But once they actually do ignite, they aren't so easy to handle. Ultimately, the industry may need to develop specialized firefighting techniques to deal with composite fires in the future. But to be perfectly candid with you, a lot of this is speculation. We are still very, very early in the investigative process, and the nature of the A350 and B2 crashes are very, very different. It'll probably be some time until we know the true cause of the blaze and why it took so long to put out. But what we do know for certain is that we are going to learn a lot from this accident. While it's tragic and it's something that nobody wanted, it'll end up providing tremendous amounts of data and insights in how composites fare under duress and how to deal with adverse scenarios that might arise in the future. And this data is really, really important to have when composite planes are becoming more and more common. 
At the end of the day, I'll leave you with this. It's obvious that this particular A350 was unable to survive the accident. But thanks to the hard work of the crew and the fire retardant properties of composites, everybody got off safe. And that's really what matters most here. And when you consider that the A350 and 787 are two of the newest and most advanced commercial jets on the market, the odds that more of these crashes even happen has never been lower. Ultimately, I still have zero hesitation flying on composite planes. In my opinion, planes like the 787 and A350 are still plenty safe to fly. So what do you guys think? Has this accident changed your perspective at all towards planes like the 787 and A350? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Oh, and I also wanted to mention that during my recent trip to Toulouse, I had the opportunity to tour Airbus's newly opened Safety Promotion Center. This space, which was built in collaboration with Japan Airlines of all people, is designed to educate Airbus employees on the weight of the work that they do and how past accidents are shaping their future. And I have no doubt that this crash will continue to define Airbus's safety culture. While I wasn't allowed to film inside of the location, Airbus does have plenty of resources online where you can learn more about this facility. I'll be sure to leave a link to those resources down below. And if you made it this far into the video, hopefully that means that you like my content enough to go give Kobe Explorers a subscribe. I'll link that channel again right here. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you like what I do and want to help the channel grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.